Well, hello and welcome to Wildcat Week. I'm Roger Alcock. Wildcat basketball is into their Crossroads League portion of their schedule and here to talk about this early season and break down some games is the head coach of the Wildcats, Coach Greg Tonegal. And uh, Coach, welcome back to Wildcat Week. I feel like we're back to where it all started a long, long time ago. But is this first time back in Wildcat Week this year, right? Bigger question is how long ago did this start? 13 years ago? 12, 14? 14 years ago. Oh, my Roger. goodness. Come on, Roger. Well, anyways, I, that doesn't seem possible, nor does it seem possible that we're just yeah. into December and we're already three games in the conference play, but that's the way it is these days. And um, the old cliche, you're not going to win a conference championship in December, but you sure can't put yourself behind the eight ball. <clears throat> not bad, 3-0, and but took two overtime wins. But <laughs> I, I think what we've seen is – no matter who you play, no matter the night, you're going to get everybody's best shot. Yeah, it's not by, been easy by any yeah. stretch of the imagination. And, and, and we certainly understood that as coaches, and our, I think our returners understand that. And if our new guys don't, they should by now because mm -hmm. it's a crossroads league, and there's a lot, of good, a lot of good teams. Good teams, good coaches, and, and this year it looks to be as strong as ever. We're going to take a look at some highlights uh, of the Goshen game in just a second here, but I want to go back before that because – you guys had a really tough road game at Mount Vernon <coughs> Nazarene. They have one of the best teams they've had in a long time. Mm -hmm. You go on the road, it's not an easy road trip. Uh, you find out, uh, I don't know, what time, noon, that also Kyle Mangus isn't going to be able to play. Um, so I think he even had some bus trouble on the way back. But, you know, that was a big win, I felt, to go on the road. You go into overtime against a really hyped-up team. Absolutely. It was a gut check for our yeah. team. Uh, we had to really dig deep. We had to have several guys uh, just step up in bigger roles. When a kid like Kyle Mangus goes down, you don't necessarily come up with a new strategy. You just you ask your guys to dig deeper, and uh, we'll probably talk about some of those guys. But we had some uh, contributions, some big-time contributions from some guys. Now, not only can uh, Evan Maxwell run a camera on this show, good. but he showed up big time in that game for you. And you needed it. You needed a senior like that. To step, to step up, to score points, but really set a tone for what you guys wanted to do. Yeah, what a performance. I mean, he goes five for five, no, six for six from mm -hmm. three en route to uh, 39 points, and they were just clutch points. And, you know, that's what seniors do. They have those moments where they put the entire team on their back, and uh, he certainly did that for us. Well, probably after that win, probably the worst thing that could happen is if you came home and laid an egg, right? You know, um, because that can happen to a team after such a – you know, intense game, but you come here back in the luck arena against Goshen that is, is admittedly struggling, but um, I thought you got off to a good start and, uh, you know, playing the second game without Kyle Mangus, but the guy we were talking about, Evan Maxwell, smacked a couple threes for you there and, and, and jumped out to an early lead and really never let Goshen into the ball game. Yeah, I thought our guys responded well. You always worry about coming off a big emotional victory like that. It's not physically, but it's emotional. And uh, we got great leadership. You see Joel Okafer right there. I mean, if you don't come to play every day, Joel's going to let you know. And so he gets the most out of his teammates. Evan's, yep. Evan's the same way. Trevor yep. Waits the same way. I was going to talk a little bit uh, uh, later about uh, uh, some of your, your seniors, and especially Trevor Waite. But, uh, boy, he knocked down a big three there. But... You gave Seth Maxwell the start, and he's a freshman, and uh, um, gives teams a, a surely a different look. And uh, but I really like how he has played, just with a lot of confidence. Yeah, he uh, he stepped up in a big way. Sometimes it takes an opportunity like that to spark somebody, and Seth took full advantage of his opportunity when inserted into the starting lineup. I mean, he's doing it on both mm -hmm. ends of the floor. He's become a heck of a defender for us, also. We talked about Trevor Waite just a second ago, but he knocked down some threes for you. Trevor had 13 points in this game, but he's three of five from three-point range. And so, you know, that senior stepping up providing leadership. Is, we know what he can do on defense, Ben, but he can score too when he needs to. Yeah, he's been super efficient this year. Just look at his numbers. I mean, his effective field goal rate is, is really high because of the threes that he's making. You know, the second half that we get into here, um, um, you got to give, I think, uh, um, um, Goshen some credit because they, they came out fighting hard in the second half, but your bench saw Isaiah play well there. Jonathan was in there. Uh, you know, whoever came in, I thought, did a pretty nice job for you. Yeah, those were great minutes for those new guys. Jonathan's been playing solid mm -hmm. for us, and he continues to get more opportunities because of it. Isaiah's growing up as a point guard, getting more opportunities. 
So each and every night out for these new guys in the Crossroads League is valuable experience. You know, Isaiah, he's got, he's got a very quick first step. That there was a play uh, in the second half where, I mean, it was basically a one on three, and he just blew by all three defenders and, and, and made a great layup. But uh, again, watching Seth do his work inside, I really like how he's been aggressive. But five offensive rebounds for Seth, maybe to me, that's one of maybe the biggest stats. Yeah, it's probably the thing that I liked most about his game because that speaks to effort and that speaks to motor. And when a kid, like Seth's size and length plays with motor, he becomes an extremely difficult matchup. Now, if Isaiah Payton starts knocking down threes consistently as well as what he can do off the dribble, then he'd be awful difficult guy to defend. Yeah, he can, he can do that. He can really stretch the defense, and he's going to get more opportunities to shoot it. Now, there we see again Trevor Waite knocking down a three. I wanted to ask you, though, about your defense. Well, how timely Trevor taking the charge there, but you know, Goshen scores a lot of points this season. You held them to, what, 58 points. That was a season low for them. So how would you evaluate your defense on that day? I thought our defensive effort was great. Uh, it wasn't perfect by any means, but the effort was there consistently for 40 minutes. We are guarding collectively mm -hmm. much better right now. You know, we've got some things to work out individually, but if you can fall back on a collective effort, you can make up for mistakes, and I thought we did that. Well, now, as I said, you guys are 3-0. and You go on the road for a couple big games. St. Francis, I know people th will think oh, they're down a little bit this year, but they're very well coached and they always have talent and they've won some big games. It's not going to be easy up in Fort Wayne to take on St. Francis. They'll be ready. No, if we don't think they want to beat us really bad, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> where have we been the last couple yeah, years, right? Yeah. I mean, there, this has been a great rivalry. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of history behind this, a lot of respect mutually mm -hmm. between both teams, but you better believe both teams are going to come out and give it their best shot. And then on Saturday, it's at Spring Arbor. Uh, Coach Cottingham, he has Spring Arbor playing as good as they play in a long time, and they always play the Wildcats well. So that'll be a big, two big road games, and, and none of them will be easy. Yeah, they're very well coached. They're very difficult to play up at Spring Arbor. So it's one game at a time, and then we'll, after the uh, St. Francis game, we'll turn our attention to Spring Arbor. Last question. Are you surprised at all? Maybe you're not, but there are only two teams right now in the Crossroads League still undefeating league play. IWU, of course, and Bethel, but and it's it's a log jam in the middle there right now. Yeah, it's early. I mean, if you're looking at records now, you probably are looking in the wrong place. So it's it's about us improving, becoming the team we think we can become. All right. Well, Coach, uh, thanks so much for stopping by. We're glad we're getting back into some real sports, right? Absolutely. And <laughs> get talking some basketball. But uh, good luck on the road this week. Thanks, Raj. All right. Well, as we said, the Wildcats will be back in action this Wednesday, actually Tuesday night against St. Francis up in Fort Wayne, game time at 7 p.m. Well, when we come back, we'll take a look at women's basketball as head coach Ethan Whaley joins us in studio next. Well, welcome back to Wildcat Week. The women's basketball team has done an outstanding job so far as they work their way through the Crossroads League. Head coach Ethan Whaley is here to break down some of the recent action in league play. And coach, uh, good to have you here on the set of Wildcat Week. And uh, we were just talking to Coach Tonigo and the guys team. 3-0 and is the way to start in league play, especially early on. I mean, you, you want to be playing from ahead when it comes to conference. I know it's really early, but boy, you sure don't want to get down early, you know, in those standings and have to fight your way back, do you? Yeah, I'm sure Greg probably told you the th same thing I'm going to say is 3-0 is great, but it really does mean nothing at this mm -hmm. point. Uh, it just means that we've done what we're supposed to do. We've gotten our job done and we've put ourselves in as good a position as we can be, but there's still 15 more to go. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a lot of work left to be done. Well, the most recent home game against Goshen College, a, a team that uh, um, I think was rebounding after a bad year last year, but uh, uh, kind of a physical team, a scrappy team, and um, in fact, you know, they kind of jumped out early on you. I think five to two was the score uh, in the first couple of minutes. But once you guys got things rolling, it was Katie bar the door. I had you for a 17 to nothing run. I think at one point, like a 36 to six run in that first half. But wow. I mean, just really uh, exploded offensively. But what I was going to ask you is that 
you don't go on runs like that unless you're playing some pretty good defense as well, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. I thought, um, first of all, you said it very well. Goshen's a, a very physical team, mm -hmm. very uh, very tough and gritty team. Maybe maybe top half of the league for sure in those categories. Uh, and they came out and hit us. Mm -hmm. And uh, the challenge that week leading up to it was who's going to hit who first mm -hmm. and then who's going to respond. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I was happy with how we responded. Um, and we had great ball presence defensively. And, and the thing that I was most pleased with, Roger, was, was our rebounding. Mm -hmm. uh, we allowed single-digit single digit offensive rebounds, and they were coming in averaging over, over 14 offensive mm -hmm. rebounds a game. So when you limit them to one-shot possessions, you put yourself in a good spot. It was good to see Carly Lang back in the lineup. She took a really hard <laughs> fall against, uh, uh, Grace. against Grace, yeah. missed, uh, missed at least one game, but mm -hmm. the second half of the Grace game, and, and then – the game at Mount Vernon answering. It's good to have her back in the lineup because she gives you a lot. Yeah, yeah. Carly's, you know, for two years now kind of been our X factor. We, mm -hmm. we go as she goes a lot of times. So uh, she's a leader in our program. She's a strong voice. Even when she was out for a couple of games, she was still the voice that our players were listening to. So uh, it was great. We kind of restricted her minutes. I think she played about 11 minutes, mm -hmm. which was amazing. Um, Nicole was also a little mm -hmm. bit banged up. She played right around 15 minutes. So to, to, to be able to get them back, get their legs back, get a flow, but not overplay them was terrific, and everybody else stepped out. Well, as we take a look at some of the highlights of this game, um, Coach, one of the players that stood out, especially in that first half, is your freshman, Margo Woofter, who, you know, is really coming along as, as a freshman. You know, even though it's early, we, we saw the potential there, but I think she's starting to kind of just learn the game a little bit better, maybe learn her role a little bit more taking better shots, just kind of recognizing the entire floor. Yeah, yeah, we've been talking a lot about decision making with her. Uh, we don't have to talk about toughness. We don't have to talk about effort. Um, she's in the gym half hour before, half hour to an hour after practice, so we don't got to talk to her about working. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just about don't try to do too much. And, and I think every freshman point guard ever played college basketball has had that conversation. Yeah. And uh, I felt like against Goshen, she made every right decision, whether it was when to shoot it, when to pass it, when to pull back, whatever it was, I was really proud of her growth. You know, and here's Nicole working inside. I love that move she she uses there. Is there anyone in the league who uses their left hand in the post better than Nicole? I'm not, no right-handed so, players, that's yeah, exactly, for sure. <laughs> exactly. You know, getting back to Margo, though, really quick, we, we saw a minute ago she had knocked down a couple threes. They come out here, had a perfect drive, and dished it off, a nice bounce pass. So, and. and Again, running the floor, but with her head up, finding uh, Elena, or excuse me, that was, uh, yeah, was Anne Ann running the floor. Yeah. So it's great to have a point guard who can score, but she, she's looking to, to, to pass the ball as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's a scoring guard, but mm -hmm. she's a very unselfish player. So when an opportunity presents itself for a teammate to get involved, she's going to take advantage of that. Um, and, and you don't lead as a freshman. You don't have full confidence in your team as a freshman unless you are unselfish and truly care about getting everybody involved. Let's talk about a sophomore here really quick. We see number two on the floor, Dayton Groninger. She's hitting the three um, earlier. You know, missed that one, but had a nice little baseline jumper, moving the ball well. But here's the thing we've noticed during games. She's she, Almost every game, she's like leading you in rebounding, or at least the top in rebounding. And that's great to see from one of your guards. Yeah, yeah, you said it very well. You know, when you can have guards uh, come in and clean up the glass with you, with our bigs, that, that, I mean, we play so fast in transition, everybody's, they're only crashing two people. So if we can get our guards to come down and help, it's going to clean up all the misses. And we talked earlier, one shot possessions defensively puts you in a good spot. There's a, a nice look there in that three. That was the Carly, then, then Margo. You know, as we get in the third quarter, one of the things I wondered about, you had such the such a huge lead going into the third quarter. It's like, okay, we're going to lay an egg in this third quarter. And I, if I if I read this correctly, you guys outscored Goshen in the third quarter, 35 to 16. So I love that you even took it up a notch in that third quarter. Yeah, yeah, we were really good, and that's something that, that we've kind of talked about a lot this year as a team. Is we've had poor third quarter stretches, mm -hmm. and, and I was proud of our effort. Uh, our seniors challenged the team to win the first three minutes big. And, and obviously playing the first three minutes the way we did set the tone for the rest of the half. You know, we saw Michaela Martini there on the breakout. Your post players have run the floor extremely well. In fact, they're not only running the floor, sometimes they're leading the break. We saw Ann do it earlier, but you can see Carly leading the break sometimes. I, I love seeing the, the your, your bigs getting down the floor. Yeah, it's 
when you've got three bigs that are as talented, mm -hmm. as physical and athletic and skilled as ours, you got to get them all on the mm -hmm. floor. And the best way to do that is, is uh, to run the floor, wear the other team down, and, and then we bring in fresh bodies when they've, they've got tired legs. So it's, it's worked out well for us so far. Putting a wrap on this game, we said Dayton Groniger had the seven rebounds but the 16 points. Uh, Nicole Ignacic, not a lot of minutes, but finished with 10 points. She was five of six from the field. It's great to see her finishing. Um, but again, Margot, 27 points, a career high, seven of nine from three point range, uh, nine of 12 from the field. And uh, um, boy, offensively, that game, you guys were totally on fire. But yeah. what about defense? I thought it was pretty stout. Yeah, I think we held them to 40 points, mm -hmm. um, and, and they were in the 20s field goal percentage-wise, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. And so um, when, when you can do that, it obviously then will translate to, to transition opportunities and, and just getting in a rhythm offensively when, when you're getting stops on the defensive end. Big game coming up on the road Wednesday at St. Francis. Uh, the Cougars playing as good as anybody right now in the mm -hmm. conference. I mean, they went down to Marion on Saturday and beat the number six team in the nation on their home floor. So a uh, big, big contest on Wednesday night for, for your squad. Yeah, yeah, they're a team much like us. They kind of started slow, but they're really building momentum. Sure seems like as I watched their last few games, they're starting to figure out roles and, and responsibilities. And, and Coach Ridge does a fantastic job. He's got them playing hard. And it's going to be a dogfight. It's at their place. Um, and that's never an easy place to play. Mm -hmm. uh, but much like every other matchup, we expect this to be a, a gritty battle and, and the toughest team is going to come out on top. Well, and I know you've said at the top of, top of this segment, you know, 3-0 is not a big deal right now, but you're the only team right now in the conference 3-0, and so certainly a target on the back. Yeah, yeah, as, as we want it to be. Yeah. You know, if you're not any good, nobody cares about you. We, we, want, we want a target because that means we're relevant, but um, if you want to stay relevant, you you got to earn it. Mm -hmm. As we talk a lot, talk is cheap. So, uh, we want to go in there and, and live up to the hype and live up to the su success that we've had so far. And hopefully we can be talking next week about, mm -hmm. about a 5-0 and o start. But it starts with St. Francis. starts today at practice, getting ready for it. Well, Coach, again, congratulations on the victory and uh, best of luck Wednesday night. And uh, we'll look forward to talking about a big week ahead for the Wildcats. Thanks, Rod. Well, as we said, the women's basketball team will, all, will be back in action Wednesday night at St. Francis. Game time up in Fort Wayne is at 7 p.m. Well, when we come back, Michaela Woodfork will bring us the breakdown and we'll talk to the head coach of the IWU swimming team as they get going into, into their second season. Well, welcome back to Wildcat Week. Now, you know we have so many different sports competing on this campus and to help us bring us up to date in this two minute drill, we welcome Michaela Woodfork with today's breakdown. Thanks, Roger. Well, the women's swimming team competed in the three-day Calvin Winter Invitational. On day one, the women finished fifth out of eight teams with Natalie Vasilakos, Alexa Milholland, and Grace Fredrickson all qualifying for the NAIA 1650 free. On day two, they moved down to seventh place, but Lene Holmgren qualified for her second NAIA event, beating the standard by 1.8 seconds. The ladies were able to finish the invite on the third day in sixth place with Whitley Iker earning her first NAIA qualification. The men and women's basketball teams defeated Goshen to kick off the month of December. The women beat Goshen 89 to 40. Margot Wooster reached a new career high of 27 points during this game. The men beat Goshen 86 to 58. Seth Maxwell got to start for the second game in a row and earned his first double-double. This was the Wildcats' eighth straight win, putting them at 11-1 for the season and 3-0 for the Crossroads League. Well, it was short but sweet this week. Back to you, Roger. Thank you so much, Michaela. Well, IW Swimming has made some great stride, strides as they begin their second season. And here to talk, us, talk to us about uh, women's swimming is the head coach of the Wildcats, Larissa Dalrymple. And so, Coach, it's been a while, but welcome back to the yeah, show. Thanks. and. Can you believe it though? I mean, you're already in your second season and, and uh, I wanted to go back a little bit to when you first got the job. You didn't have a lot of time to really get ready for that first season, so it's been a very active kind of year for you, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun though. This second year has been a huge difference in that we don't feel like we're going into it blind. We have a little bit of an idea of what's going on and what to expect, so that's been really helpful that we can 
build off of what we did last year. One of the things that I think is pretty cool is you get to start the season at the at Purdue in the in, at the Indiana Intercollegiates, and uh, it's a great chance to swim in a really cool venue against mm -hmm. some really good teams and kind of see where we are. I think last year there might have been just a bit of a you know uh, an awe kind of oh, moment. Sure. Uh, this year, do you think th the ladies felt maybe like, hey, we belong here and let's compete? The the sophomores definitely did. The freshmen, you could still tell that they were a little yeah. like. Oh wow, but I feel like they stepped up and swam great even in that environment. I think they really yeah. made the most of the experience. Now, um, one of the other big meets, what we really want to talk about, just happened last weekend. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like your winter championships, if you will. You go up to Calvin College up in Michigan. Um, some really great competition up there. Yeah. And I mean, overall, the Wildcats had a great weekend. I know you're really happy with some of those swims. Oh man, yeah, we go up there to this great facility and these teams that we normally maybe wouldn't compete against because mm -hmm. they're all NCAA teams. And so we're kind of um, maybe the smaller team mm -hmm. on the totem pole, but it's really fun to swim against them. Some great athletes. We taper or rest mm -hmm. a little bit for this meet in particular so we can try to get some really good times. They swam great. It's a busy weekend, lots yeah. of swimming, lots of competing that they do, but they really had a great weekend. What, it, it, there's so many events, we can't highlight them all, but there were a couple outstanding swims. One to highlight, uh, one of your freshmen, Sydney Darnell, uh, finished fifth in the 200 IM, and then uh, sixth in the 100 fly, so she's on the podium there. Talk just a little bit about Sydney and what she's done, because she's She's a really good freshman for you, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's very talented and she can swim pretty much anything yeah. that we put her in. So she gets used on all the relays as well. So that's something else to mm -hmm. note there that she also had a very busy weekend with lots of swims. But um, she's a hard worker mm -hmm. and a strong personality that is is really ready to compete at any, any day, any time. Then you had Emma Travis, one of your returners, uh, kind of a, a sprint freestyler. Finished sixth in the 100 free, really nice uh, time there, 53-52. She did very well in the 50 free, uh, contributes on your relays, but um, only a sophomore, but she's doing a great job helping you lead this squad. Uh, we can always count on Emma to pull through. Yeah. She's definitely a racer. I mean, you put her at the end of the relay and you know she's going to out-touch whoever she's swimming against, but that's just kind of athlete she is. We can count on her anytime we put her in the pool. It's kind of funny for those who know Emma, she's so meek and mild, but in the in the pool, she's really a competitor. She is, yeah. Uh, one to mention, Madison Sturzma, another freshman, did a great job in the 100 free. 100 free. She uh, finished seventh, mm -hmm. seventh in that, uh, so got in the podium there. So another really strong outing for one of your freshmen, Madison, who who's done a great job for you. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think she's really learning how strong she really is and mm -hmm. how good she really can be. Now the next thing really is kind of, you have some meets, and, but you have some time off, but now you're gonna start after this kind of building once again towards the national championships in Columbus, Georgia in February. So you have some meets before that, mm -hmm. you have a conference championship meet, but uh, um, a lot of work to be done between now and then. But as I count, there's already five teams qualified for NAI Nationals, and um, let's see, eight different swimmers, 23 individual uh, events that they've qualified for. So that's certainly a step up from what was a really strong showing last year. You gotta be happy. Oh yeah, we're very excited. The, I mean, we just had this big meet this weekend. Mm -hmm. We got lots of qualifying times at this meet. And so um, now we'll just start building, kind of start into the second half of our season, build back up with some solid training and get rolling, hopefully get more qualifying times in the next few couple months. Very last question for you, we gotta make it quick. Um, I talk to coaches about recruiting all the time because it's a year-round process, full disclosure. You've si just signed two recruits that are pretty near and dear to my heart, <laughs> but um, gotta talk real quick about Kinsey and Chloe Price. Um, two really solid swimmers, but I think a good start to what you wanna build, uh, another great class to, to continue this program. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we're super excited about those girls. They're, they're gonna be a great addition to our team. We can't wait to have them on our team, um, but we have, just we're going to be adding hopefully some more mm -hmm. that'll be just as talented as them. Awesome. Well, uh, again, Coach, we look forward to talking to you in next semester about SWIM. Continued success to you guys, and uh, uh, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, SWIMming will be back in action on December the 14th down in Indianapolis, the University of Indianapolis, 5 p.m. on that Friday night.
Well, that's all we have for you on this episode of Wildcat Week. If you'd like to see more of Wildcat Week, you can visit our website, WIWTV.com, and there you can watch past episodes and connect with us online. Again, that's WIWTV.com. And you can stay connected with all our local programming by subscribing to our YouTube channel. That is WIWTV51. Well, we look forward to seeing you next week. So for all of us here, thanks for watching Wildcat Week.